What up, Chem Squad? Today we're going to look at the effects of a catalyst and inhibitors on a PE diagram. Um, so we've talked about catalysts before. I'm just going to quickly summarize what a catalyst uh, might be. Catalysts are basically substances. that speeds up a reaction by decreasing activation energy. And we sometimes call activation energy just EACT. Okay. But the thing is, um, catalysts, they are never consumed in the reaction and must reform. at the end of the reaction. Okay, so that's usually true. So you can't destroy catalysts. Um, however, there is an exception with enzymes. Enzymes do the same job, but enzymes can be destroyed by heat. So what we're going to look at is if you actually apply a catalyst to a reaction um, and it speeds up, the question is, well, why does it speed up? Like, what is it actually doing? Like, how is it decreasing the activation energy of a reaction? So I'm going to scroll down here and you're going to see a PE curve. So at this point here, I want you to pause the video okay, and just take a few minutes to sketch out the actual uh, PE curve, okay, just so that we can save some video time. All right, so you have the entire um, PE curve drawn out. So a couple of things to notice. Um, let's say that this particular reaction is for H2O2 decomposing into H2O and O2 gas. Okay, So the same type of uh, demo that you saw in, I think it was uh, yesterday's lessons. Okay, Now in this case here, peroxide is the reactant. So on the first plateau, okay, which is at 15 kilojoules, okay, we basically have the potential energy for your reactants. Okay, so this is the potential energy for the reactants. It's at 15 kilojoules. For the products, the potential energy is much smaller. Okay, it's at 5 kilojoules. So when you look at the difference here between your starting pro uh, reactants and your ending products, that's a difference of 10 kilojoules. Okay. Those 10 kilojoules is basically released. Okay. Making this an exothermic reaction. So this is the PE diagram for an exothermic reaction that happens rather slowly because you have such a high activation energy. So the activation energy always starts at the very top here of the peak and it goes all the way down to where your um, potential energy of reactants are. Okay, So this we will mark off as your original activation energy, EACT. 
And according to the graph, uh, 45 minus 15, that's 30 kilojoules. Okay. But at the very top of the peak, there is an actual substance up here. Okay. This is the potential energy. Okay, so the EAC is also the potential energy of something called an intermediate. Okay. It also has another name called activated complex. So either one is fine. I use intermediate. Ms. Thompson uses activated complex. We'll talk more about what that intermediate is, but right now just think of it as a transition molecule between your reactants and your products because it's pretty much in the middle between the two. Okay, so what we're trying to say here is peroxide has to gain 30 kilojoules of energy from its surrounding environment in order for an intermediate to form, and then that intermediate helps form your products. Okay. So once it uh, has acquired all this energy, it will actually produce water and oxygen. But we want to speed it up. Okay. So let's switch colors here. The catalyst that we've talked about before for this particular reaction is manganese dioxide or manganese 4 oxide. I've colored it in red. Okay. So we'll see what the actual effect is. So if you were to put manganese oxide at the beginning with peroxide okay because it's the reactant that we start with the reactant has the same potential energy as normal okay so that's why we always start at the same plateau but the only difference looks like this okay it has a smaller peak because MnO2, manganese dioxide, has found a new chemical pathway to break down peroxide much more quickly. Okay, So up at the top here, you have a new intermediate. And that intermediate basically is influenced by manganese dioxide. Okay. As a result, that intermediate has a new lower activation energy. And because it has a lower activation energy, it doesn't take as much time to turn into products. But once it does start turning into products, you'll notice that it plateaus at exactly the same spot as your potential energy for the products themselves, water and O2. It has to because it's making the same products. The only difference is it makes it faster. It starts making products right here. Instead of over here a little bit later. So just to summarize, your products are made sooner only because when you add a catalyst, the catalyst will find a new intermediate to be made, a new chemical pathway, which requires less energy. And because it requires less energy, it makes the product sooner. Okay, and that's all there really is to a catalyst. Inhibitors, they do the opposite. Okay, and I'll need the next video to explain all that because it's a little bit more complicated.